everybody. We are back and I got a great guest on the line. He's a singer songwriter. His name is Jason Matuskovitz and he is talking about his brand new single today called Fare Thee Well and his new EP coming out pretty soon called Same Day. Welcome to the show, Jason. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, Emma. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. So you know what? I love talking about music. And the reason I, I do love talking about music is because Music has is something special for me. It always tells stories. It can send me back in time, and it can it can touch emotions. So I love music, and I'm glad you're here to talk to us about yours today. Me too. It's magical. It's, to me, music is literal, actual, real magic. It is. You know, they say that we don't have a time machine, but I don't believe that. I believe it's done through music. We we can almost teleport back or forward in time to things that we remember just by hearing a song. Or other places far off in the universe, instantaneously. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into music? And when did you start the love of it? And what were some of like your first instruments that you played? Oh man, uh, I loved, um, I loved music. Um, from the time I was a kid, um, but it was something that I never dreamed of a real mortal human being could actually do. I assumed that it was made by gods and goddesses on high. Um, you know, and a lowly being like me could never hope to achieve something so lofty. But I never, unless I got a guitar to mess around and I was quite terrible for a long time. Um, but I joined a band when I was in law school, of all things. I mean, I kind of messed around for the intervening years, but I was not very good. And then I joined a band in law school. I managed to coerce them to let me play bass. And I loved it. I just absolutely, I was electrified by the feeling of being in a band and being on stage and making music. And um, so uh, eventually, through a couple of permutations in the band, I insinuated myself as a songwriter in the process, which I love even more um, because I was part of writing the music that we performed, not just performing it. And that just uh, became the thing that I loved the most about music. And um, uh, you know, played in that band for a number of years, and then we. Uh, uh, died in a tragic accident under the weight of our own expectations on ourselves. You know, it happens when you're certain you're going to be a rock star. You know, it can't happen anyway. Um, and then my um, my girlfriend at the time um, uh, moped around the house allegedly for six months. Um, that's you know what I was told. I felt like I was fine, but she uh, she coerced one of her friends to start a band with me and so we did but during the pandemic we couldn't see each other even though we live a mile apart couldn't go to our rehearsal space that's halfway in between our apartments um and so I had to uh I mean I have to make music and I have to write it so I just did a, I wrote a whole bunch of songs and you know put them out under the name Jason Matu even though it's a, a collaborative effort with a lot of people that I've worked with, including my uh, chiefs and tape band, May Adam, and my, my guys in the Moon City Masters, and my good friend, Justin Craig, produces all of it. Wow. So take, take me through the process of your songwriting. Where does it start? Does it start with the melody? Does it start with the words? Does it start with an emotion? How do, how do you go through your, your process? I think it starts with an emotion. It starts with a uh, not like there's never anything explicit but there's like a feeling that i'm trying to express um you know probably something that i'm feeling at the time that i'm writing it um a lot of times almost all the time and so i just let um i just keep playing whatever kind of chord progression i'm working on that feels like it's expressing that emotion and then i just start singing things uh, randomly 
uh, hoping that something good comes out. And um, sometimes that happens quickly. Sometimes it takes many, 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 many iterations of playing the same little chord progression until you know a melody or a series of words comes out that can be like the hook. It's always like there's always one kind of phrase that becomes the one that the rest of it's built around. Sometimes it's a couplet. But usually it's until you get that thing that you hang the rest of it around. For me that, uh, like I can usually tell when I've got it. And then a lot of times with the chorus, um, the choruses, um, I usually have those first. Um, and sometimes I'll have the phrase uh, like in a previous song, like be nice to yourself. Um, I had that. That was like the phrase that was going to be the chorus for the thing that I wanted to express. Um, and I think in the case of Fairly Well, I did have the chorus. Like I had the uh, that specific phrase I wanted to say. And I wanted to, you know, talk about like, um, you know, telling a, like a feeling to go away instead of a person. Yeah. You know. um, so that's my general process. Sometimes I'll just write to a specific phrase, but usually it's a feeling that I'm trying to portray um, through the song. Um, because I find that, you know, it helps to give something a name, put it in a box, and it's pretty to like try to paint a picture of it in the words. Yeah. To me, anyway. So with with songs i've tried writing songs and it's not good <laughs> it really isn't i mean i've been able to write stories i've been able to write poems but i've never really been able to write a song and i don't know if it's because i'm trying to rhyme it and i don't think it necessarily necessarily has to rhyme but i think it's the chorus that i always try to make you know important because that was really what i think everybody remembers more than the rest of the song but the rest of the song is all the good stuff that makes the chorus special so i'm trying to figure out how to how how i would do that do you think that that songs have to rhyme or sometimes they can sometimes they can't does it really matter to you no they don't have to rhyme uh not at all and in fact you know it it works you know both ways i like to do lately i've been doing like constant rhymes and then like playing with different uh, rhyme schemes. But there are plenty of songs that I've written that have no rhymes in the chorus, no rhymes in the, in the verse. Um, it's really just a song to song thing. It's, you know, each, each song just needs to be the best version of itself. And, and there are tons of examples of things that don't have to rhyme. So how would you describe your music style to people that have not heard you yet? Folk rock. It's a regular old folk rocker from, you know, I would, if I had a time machine, I'd be in Laurel Canyon in the 1970s. Um, but I'm not trying to be like a pastiche and bring, definitely bring in some 2021 flavor to the game. But my guys in the Moon City Masters sing such great harmonies. And I play it on an acoustic guitar, you know, folk rock nursery rhymes with a little poetry mixed in. So <laughs> the... Uh, the Laurel Canyon comparison is, is inevitable, and uh, it's one that I embrace. So how do you keep your music out there for people to see and it doesn't get lost in the shuffle? Because, I mean, even with photography, when I did photography, I realized that it was a very populated area and you know especially with cell phones and everything else and people didn't have to know how to use the, the camera to take a good photo so all of a sudden here you start to see a lot of populated things coming in and i know the music industry is like that too because i've worked with some bands that were part of that so how do you keep your music fresh and stay out there and make sure that when people hear that song they know it's you and it gives you your own identity uh just um consistent releases and getting better and honing my uh, honing my craft, so that first of all, I have a um, you know a voice that sounds pretty uniquely like myself. Um, and uh, now that it can hit notes, it's like my secret weapon. <laughs> That's important. 
<laughs> also, um, also because of my, uh, you know, humility is never been my strongest suit. My, uh, my um, education in uh, literature and poetry, um, you know, there's hardly a song that goes by where I'm not casually dropping in some kind of illusion. In one of my future uh, songs, um, like I fully quote uh, William Shakespeare's Sonnet 18 in the bridge. Um, but, you know, a lot of times I'll just toss in a reference to like, or just blatantly steal something from like a Rambo poem or T.S. Eliot or um, stuff like that. So it's like having a unique perspective and, um, you know, a unique way of um, bringing something new to um, what I don't believe is at all a tired form of music. And, um, and then I just keep it fresh and exciting by always working on it, always like looking at the new thing. My favorite song is always the uh, next one to come out, which in this particular case, my next one is my, by, my, by far the best one I've ever done. But that just happens to be true in this particular case. Now, let's talk about your EP, because I know EPs do not have a full amount of songs. I think they're like six or seven, somewhere in that area, but I guess it can vary. Um, how do you choose songs to go into your, your particular album? Does it, do you put them that design that tells a story? Are they similar in style? Um, what do you, how, how are you building this new um, EP of yours called Same Day? So this particular EP, it only has three songs on it because um, I wrote all three of those songs on the same day during the pandemic, oh. which is an, not a common thing to do. Um, so um, I decided to stick to all three of them on an EP together because I thought it was, you know, an extraordinary day that I had um, that particular, it was a Saturday um <clears throat> that particular saturday i was on fire creatively and so um i just wanted to have a document that like put put all those together i'm gonna put the same songs on an album when um when i get done you know releasing this series of singles my release process is to just put out every song or you know most songs one by one and then collect them into an album or a compilation when um usually it's because the uh the theme the topic that i'm that i've written those that batch of songs about is done um this is only going to be my second album um but um yeah this one's about the um the process of getting through extreme grief so uh, what what songs what are the titles of the songs on this uh it's fare thee well uh covid19 parenthetical 2020 and that's fine um fare thee well was my attempt to uh self-actualize the uh the despair like you know go away don't need you here in this basement anymore despair I'll see you in hell. Um, and, um, you know, it's probably like, that was more wishful thinking than uh, reality uh, at the time. Um, and um, COVID-19 was just about the very brief and glorious period of time when in its infinite wisdom, the New York Assembly legalized to-go drinks and uh, you know, my friends and I would institute a practice of getting walking cocktails. So go to one bar, get one of their ridiculous drinks. Um, they're like basically vodka and Kool-Aid a lot of times. And go to the park, uh, have the drink, go to the next bar, get another one, go to the next park, Kind of go on a little like walking tour. You couldn't really get more than three or four because <laughs> you wouldn't get home. Potent, potent beverages. Um, and um, 
And, and yeah, there are good times when we would go like hang out on my stoop for a minute. Um, and then, you know, bid adieu. And that was the only kind of social interaction that was available, but it was, it was incredibly unique. And despite all of the context, I still look at that specific thing as um, something that I, I look back on fondly about the pandemic um, because you know, I was so utterly lonely and alone at the time that like that human contact was just like, I needed it so badly. And uh, that's fine is just, um, that's a tune where I had the chorus first. Um, in another life, I practice law among you know, many other things, managing uh, bands and, uh, you know, the many, many projects. So I was talking to a client and sometimes clients like to argue. I hate when clients argue with me. I'm not telling you how it is. I'm not like, you're not paying me to be an expert on this subject so you can give me back talk. It's not how this relationship works. Um, but <laughs> he's trying to argue with me. I was like, this conversation doesn't matter, client, because you're going to keep saying what you're saying. And I'm going to keep saying what I'm saying. And we're just going to disagree. And that's fine. And then I was like, oh, that's fine. That's a song title. So um, I was probably on my third song of the day at that time. So I was like, just um, threw a bunch of um, like, uh, you know, sort of silly statements together and then just uh, said that they were fine. Also wow. features one of my all time favorite lyrics, being in a hurry is a waste of time. <laughs> I like that. So when is your uh, EP gonna be hitting the, the market for people to get? Oh, actually it already did. It did, okay. For a couple of weeks now. Okay. So how can people get your song, obviously all three of your songs, but also the uh, maybe some old albums and this album, where can people find it? Uh, well, so it's on all of the streaming platforms. Also, um, it's on, a, I, should, I should put a link on my website. Um, it is free to download if, uh, no, it's just free. You can opt into my, uh, you know, my, my uh, party line, AKA the email, uh, list um if you want but it's it's available for download uh with the ep mp3s of the ep and the acoustic demos um and i will put a link to that on my website perfect uh, now, which is jasonmatu.com there you go so tell everybody how they can because we're running out of time we got about a minute and a half because i want them to be able to hear uh hear the um uh, fairly well song how can people reach out to you and do you have any social media or anything like that you'd like to uh, promote? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can reach me at jason at I can't wait for summer .com, or you can just shoot me a message at jasonmatu.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram. You can, uh, I'm not very good at checking messages there, but eventually I do get to them. I'm not very good at using the platform. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm old. What can I say? Um, and I'm also on Facebook, but not very much. Um, and uh, yeah, check out my website, jasonmatu.com. And you know, I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, um, Deezer, Napster, um, bandcamp.com. Well, we are about ready to play the song. I think it would be a good idea if you actually introduce it because it's your song, it's your baby. So let's get them ready to hear it. All right. Thank you so much, Emma. Thanks for uh, checking out this interview on Emma's World. This is Jason Matu uh, and my new single, Fairly Well. And it's playing right now, guys. So after the song, we'll be back in two to close out the show. So don't go anywhere and enjoy the song. Like, OMG, you were on TV and junk. 